So here we are again on the road. My camera woman and myself we're going to San Sebastián del Oeste, this beautiful Mexican town in the mountain in Jalisco. And we're going to meet with an icon, someone really special that will enlighten me a lot about the origins of the craft beer in America. So you'll see who is this important person. I'm very excited about it. Pues este es el segundo video de la serie El origen de la cerveza artesanal y en este video corresponde a los Estados Unidos. ¿Cuáles son sus orígenes? La cerveza que se tiene considerada como la primera que surgió en una cervecería artesanal es la Steam Beer de Anchor Brewery desde hace más de 150 años. Y esta cervecería surgió en San Francisco en la época del Gold Rush, que era cuando todos los inmigrantes estaban buscando pepitas de oro y se iban a buscarla en las montañas, en los ríos, y buscaban una veta de oro. Y esta cerveza era para que ya fuera que tuvieran éxito o no, regresaran a San Francisco, a la bahía, y tuvieran una rica cerveza para disfrutar o para empujarse al siguiente día. Y en los años 60, después de muchos años de existir altas y bajas, y a punto de ser la compró Fritz Maytag en los años 60. Diez años después o cinco años después se incorporó al equipo Mark Carpenter y hoy tengo la oportunidad de hablar con él quien fue el cervecero y maestro cervecero por más de 40 años en Anchor Brewery. Yeah. Wow. It was wow. to please the gold miners. So maybe that's the reason it's so delicious. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm here with Mark Carpenter. He's a former brewmaster of Anchor Brewery in San Francisco, California. And this is a unique opportunity for me in my channel at YouTube because, Mark, you're an icon, right? Yeah. Everybody recognizes you as someone really important, uh, someone that started this craft beer movement all around America and then Mexico and some other countries. What a beer. Mark was one of the originals. What does Mark like to say? I've been at Anchor longer than I haven't, so that's pretty cool. Mark was always really gracious, and it was nice to meet somebody that was so warm and helpful to an upstart brewery like myself. Mark will call me about questions about equipment that they're going to buy, uh, and I'm always like, why are, you, uh, why are you calling me? I just think it's great to see Mark get recognition for all the hard work he's done all these years. 40 years in this industry is really an unprecedented, and unparalleled, notable achievement. I hope that I'm in the industry for 40 years as well. One of the touchstones of the craft beer industry is the culture that's behind Anchor, the attitude of Mark Carpenter, and how they're going to bring that forward. So thanks, Mark, for 40 years of innovation, insight, and friendship. And when I was looking at your biography and, and some interesting things about you, I was like, oh my God, really? Because I read that you were the first one to brew an IPA in America. That's correct. Wow. Okay, well, <laughs> the, the uh, Liberty Ale mm -hmm. is, truly is an IPA. Okay. It's never been called an IPA, but by any definition, the amount of hops, the bittering units would make it an IPA. We had a, a hop grower who recommended to Fritz that he try the Cascade hop. Okay. No one had been using it as an aroma <laughs> hop. It was just a hop added like any other hop for uh -huh. bitterness. And, and uh, so Fritz got some of the hops and we tried them. And so we used uh, the Cascade hops and, uh, and we added so many uh, that when people drank it, that they say, oh, you can't drink this beer. It's too many hops. Really? It's too oh, hoppy. Oh, yeah, it's too <laughs> hoppy. Too hoppy. Today, uh -huh. it would be considered at the low end of, of uh, IPA. Like a station IPA or something yeah. like that? Yeah, really? and we haven't used any less hops. We still okay. use the amount. Okay. So it's America's acceptance of hops has become so great. I really love the West West Coast IPA. Yeah. That bitterness yeah. in, in, in your palate, that, I love that. The other <laughs> thing is kind of interesting, because of all the hops we use uh -huh. and all the bulk, that uh, Liberty Ale is, is uh, harder to keep clear than steam beer. Mm -hmm. And so we had to filter it tighter because in those days, you couldn't sell a hazy beer. People wouldn't buy it. <laughs> okay. That's it needed to be changed. clear. 
Yeah, it had to be clear. Uh -huh. And now that is completely turned around. Uh, right. We can try an IPA here at this bar that's completely cloudy and delicious. Yes. yes. And uh, <laughs> and it would have been nice if we could have done that with Liberty. It would have made our jobs much easier. That's right. So, when you started back in 1971, correct? How old you were? 20. Well, I was born in 43, so I guess 27. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you arrived to the brewery looking for a job, or correct? <laughs> See, it was. I had worked for the telephone company previous okay. to Anchor, and this was the <laughs> 60s in California, uh -huh. and in San Francisco, and. Things were happening there. It was very different. You know, okay. every, people were looking for new lifestyles. Uh -huh. uh, there was so much music around. You know, the Grateful Dead, right? Uh, yeah, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix and mm -hmm. Janis Joplin. Yeah, and, yeah, Janis Joplin. <laughs> any famous band, they were there, and so people were searching new lives. And I was perfectly happy with my job, but I wanted something more out of life too, just like everybody. Uh -huh. And I had never traveled because I went to work right out of school. So I actually quit work for a couple of years and traveled. We went to Europe for the first time. And then when I got back home, I uh, I took a tour of the uh, Anchor Brewing Company okay. to get a free beer. Just and for that. Just for that. <laughs> a friend and I went. And we, we had a great tour and we had some great beer. And then I thought, man, this would be a great place to work. And I saw it as kind of a temporary job because I was what I was trying to do in that time off was figure uh -huh. out what do I want to do with my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I thought, well, I could work at Anchor and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with my life. Right. And so I'm still kind of figuring it out. <laughs> so and, it was a temporary job? Well, in my mind, <laughs> it wasn't necessarily the end. All right. You know, it, I, and, and uh, but I'll tell you, once you get in a brewery, uh, I think people who like that environment just love it because you have all this machinery, mm -hmm. you have these big copper kettles, yeah, and they're just, and you have good food, you know, good barley malt. Uh -huh. uh, when you make beer, the first thing you make is work. You take barley malt and you cook it in hot water, right? And then you run off the sweet liquid to boil with the hot, right? So, and we would start brewing at like four in the morning. And, and so we'd get there and you'd make this sweet work. And it was just delicious. And you'd be running off to the kettle and be a cold morning. Uh -huh. And you put a coffee cup under that uh, tap and get the sweet work. It was just delicious. Wow. You know? Wow. And, and so they're, they're just magical places. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Fritz always said that we don't make beer. All we do is put all the ingredients together mm -hmm. and let the yeast make the beer. Right. Try right. to make conditions right. Mother Nature. Yes. <laughs> and so they're just magical places. You know, it's kind of alchemy, right? Yeah. So they did that with steam beer. So they had these crudely made beers that were highly carbonated, all right. being sold in a bar in San Francisco. And when they tap them, they get lots of foam because they have, they have to control. So the glass would fill with foam. Okay. And so somebody said, "Oh, it looked like steam." So that's the reason. Ah, it's the story I like because <laughs> because it rings true to me. Mm -hmm. The other ones don't ring true to me. Right. I agree with you because putting the big tanks on the roof was like, how do you do it? Yeah. And uh, well, they all, they're very many did. Uh, they were usually to say it was on the roof is is not true either. They were in a covered thing. All right. And higher in the building. All right. And the reason they did them high in the building because then it could travel by gravity through back okay. down okay. to the finished beer. Okay. But they, um, but they, uh, no, that has I don't think that had anything to do with the name. I and do. unfortunately, <laughs> they, uh, there's people who write these books and they like to say things, but I'm telling you the story that I like. Uh -huh. So you're saying the, the steam beer is a lager, actually? It's it's really, a, it's a kind of a cross in, in styles, but it's a artificial lager beer. It's okay. trying to be a lager, uh -huh. it's trying to fool the drinker. Go ahead, but, drink me, I'm a right. lager. <laughs> yeah, but with heat uh, yeah. on the, on the At a higher fermentation, fermentation right. temperature. Yeah. Wow. So what do you think, Mark? Do you want to sip it? <laughs> yeah, you know, let's start with the steam beer. Sure, whatever uh, you want. Oh, I just love that steam beer. I, I was 
Uh, thank you. I love the the bottle. It's quite yeah. different to what we have here in Mexico. Uh, uh, small and, and chubby. <laughs> that was the Beautiful. only bottle Fritz could get when he first started bottling. And because before Fritz bought the brewery, they was not in bottles. It was only draft. Beer. Okay. And so this was the <laughs> the bottle that Fritz could get. Nice color. Thank you. Team beer. This is my first team beer. How do you say in 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 Europe? Frost. Frost. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Here in Mexico is salud. Delicious. Malty, caramel. Yeah. And bitter at the same time. It's very balanced. A lot of balance. You know, one of the things wow. that first attracted me to steam beer when. Uh, because when I started there, all the beers in America were just yellow beer, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, the, it was the head, that the color was off-white. Uh -huh. And I just thought it was so beautiful, you know. And I remember uh, whenever I had a steam beer, I first had a steam beer in 1963, actually, okay. long before I worked there. All right. There was a bar in Napa, <laughs> California. Uh -huh. In Napa. <laughs> called uh, Leroy's Hooch House. Okay and they were just a beer bar and they had steam beer this is delicious and it was a girlfriend who had me have it believe it or not the carbonation is crispy but yeah. but it's also silky it's yeah yeah delicious <laughs> well thank you i just love it it's just uh you know it's been <laughs> it's such a familiar taste to me mm -hmm. and when i, I can really, tell. when i really learned to appreciate steam beer when when i was traveling for the brewery um different places to visit distributors and uh, I'd come home from from a trip you know and and as soon as I'd get home I'd open a steam beer and, uh -huh. and it was probably the first one I'd had in a little while and it just always tasted so good to me uh, memory right yeah yeah uh, it, this is my first one and I found it Different is maybe the only comparison that I have is Germany beers. Yes, yes. Good quality, uh, balance, and you can have all the flavors at the same time. It's very much like an alt beer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it, it tastes like a nail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For good reason. <laughs> it fermented at ale temperatures. Wow. It's quite different. Yeah. Quite different. So now, on the other hand, we get this uh, California Lager. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this one, please. Believe it or not, that's my creation with uh, uh, help, <laughs> help and inspiration. Because so many of these beers, you know, it was a real, it was mainly Fritz Maytag or a few of us getting together. But the lager, I kind of had to fight to make because when the, <laughs> when the, uh, Fritz Maytag sold the brewery. The new owners came to me okay. and they said they wanted to make a new beer. And would I create something? And I said, yes. And I went to a guy that I worked with that I liked and I said, Mike, we got to make a new beer. And uh, we're in 1970s? No, no, this, this would have been, Fritz sold it about 212 or something, okay. 2012, something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, Mike, do you have any ideas? What? And he says, well, why don't we make a lager, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. I said, oh, Mike, lagers are just boring, you know? I said, we don't want to make a lager. And, but then I went away, and we talked about other beers, but then I went away, and, and I thought, you know, Mike may have something there. I said, but to make it interesting, I want to duplicate the first lager made in California. Okay. The first lager made in California was, I think, 1878 or close to it. And it was made in Boca, California, mm -hmm. which was up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, very close to the town of Truckee, which is more well known. And because they had a lake there and it froze in the winter time, and so they mm -hmm. cut the ice and, and pack ice in the ice house. And they, the Boca Brewery was the first to make a lager in California. Okay. So I thought if we could recreate that. And so it actually, I thought it wouldn't be hard to do because we knew that they would have used all malt grown in California. All uh -huh. the barley would have been grown in California. 
So I thought I can get California barley, that, that won't be a problem. And then, but the hops, we don't know for sure what hops they were, but <laughs> we're pretty darn sure that they would have been cluster hops still okay. at that time. Are, were they native from America? Actually, the cluster hop is a kind of a cross between a European hop and a wild hop in the east coast of the United okay. States. And it was the, uh, and when people came west, they brought the cluster hop. It was just such a common hop and so hard. Okay. And I never really thought about it as that it might be a good hop to use for a beer. <laughs> because it, it was is. just so common, you know, was, uh -huh. and uh, but I thought they would have used cluster hops, so we got it. Yeah. We know what the alcohol would have been. Mm -hmm. It would have been four percent by weight, that's right, or or five percent by volume, you know, mm -hmm. because, because that's what lagers were around yes. the world. That's what you got. Yeah, and and we know that the bittering units would have been around twenty-five because that's what you can read about lagers around the world. That's mm -hmm. a, basically in the twenties. Okay, know? and. Uh, And so we made it with the and and I think and it was supposed to be just a one-off for a special occasion. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it didn't. It was no problem using these California malt and all that, you know, for one brew, which was about 125 barrels. Um, and uh, so we made it, and it was delicious. It was <laughs> the, the cluster hops were really amazing. Wow! And it was a delicious lager. And oh, also we lagered it, we aged it. Okay, know, we, okay. And, and so it really was a good lager beer. And then the owners said to me, well, you know, this is such a hit, we want to make it all the time. I said, well, you can't make it all the time. I said, because <laughs> it'll tie up too many cellar tanks too long, you know? Uh -huh. And if you're going to, otherwise you're not going to make it right. And they said, oh, we'll buy more tanks. Well, they did. And so we did start making it. You know? Wow. Let's try. The, the California lager. Very good, sir. All right. And meanwhile, what do you think of Mexico? Have you tried any right. craft beers to here in Mexico? I'm not on this trip, but I I, well, I, I I take that back. I've had their beers on this trip. Uh -huh. But yes, in in past trips, I've had some other brewers, and I've always thought they were pretty good. Actually, you know, uh, there was a lager I can't remember it, but it was real good. Uh, I was at a restaurant in Puerto Vallarta. The Tapas Barcelona. Oh yeah, Tapas Barcelona. Uh -huh. And I had a craft beer lager there that I thought was pretty good. And then this brewery uh, does has done some very unique stuff. Okay. This is more much uh, clear. Yep. Yep. And pallid, right? Pale. This is is on yellow. The dark, on the dark uh -huh. side for a lager, uh -huh. but that's what we wanted. That's what it should be. Uh huh. They, Beautiful. Because, uh, you know, modern lagers are all made with either corn or rice. All right. So it really makes the... And, and you said it's 5 ABB? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. Let's see. It smells like a lager. Yeah. Completely. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Sure Uh, I think it should have a bit more carbonation to it, but you know, okay, batch it, to batch it can vary. But it's so refreshing, yes. smooth, yeah, easy to drink, beer. easy to drink. Yeah, you can have six of this, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. And I heard that you have this uh, Christmas beer. Yes, our Christmas is that, ale. Is that the name? Christmas yeah. ale? And I heard that it's one of a kind. Every year it's a new label with a different tree. Uh -huh. The uh, Prince Maytag, when he was owner, he started that tradition. The new year has to do with the solstice and the rebirth, and so it, it, it's not just the birth of Christ. They, they moved in on all the pagan ceremonies, okay. the okay. rebirth. <laughs> and the tree symbolizes that, and a uh, different recipe every year. And we would get together as a group and discuss what to do for the recipe. It was Ultimately, it was Prince's uh, decision on what we did. Uh, I, we, and it was supposed to be a secret. Um, it, I'll tell you this much. We never use clove. <laughs> okay, okay. And everyone who would drink it would say, Oh, it has clove. I taste clove in there. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the hop. It, well, we use spices. Okay. We used a lot of different spices. Uh -huh. uh, one that I haven't talked about in the past, we used frankincense. 
What is that? Oh. It's that incense. Oh. All that incense in church. Okay, okay. That's frankincense. I, I was an altar boy. I hate that and, stuff. And you added to the brew? Prince wanted to put it in one here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have one more question. Mark, from all the different styles of beer, which one is your favorite? The one I'm drinking. Really? The lager? <laughs> no. The one I'm drinking is my favorite right then. The current one. <laughs> the current one. <laughs> we go back to Steve. I yes. think because you just want to appreciate every beer. I, I, and there are so many good styles of mm -hmm. beer around the world. Mm -hmm. Then you go through Germany, you get alt beer, and then you have the, um, you know, the Kolsch and yes. and all the these different beers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and oh, in Belgium, forget mm -hmm. it. You got a zillion of them. Yeah. And so you can appreciate. And there may be some you think, well, this isn't my favorite but you know you're when you're in a, a, a German bar having a beer you're gonna love it uh -huh. <laughs> and when you're in England at a, you're in a German love it. pub having a real ale <laughs> it's gonna be your favorite beer you yes. know so yeah yes so far this is one of my favorites well, I, love you. I love it I love it yeah if I if I had to pick one favorite beer I'd, I'd have to say it's steam beer just because I mm -hmm. I drank it so much mm -hmm. over the years you mm -hmm. know and I just I just love it I still love it wow it's delicious thank you very much for your time well, for, thank you. for giving me this opportunity of, of have you in my YouTube channel and I appreciate it very much. Very Welcome good. to Mexico. If uh, if you can ever get to San Francisco, I'll make sure you get a tour of the brewery. Absolutely, yeah. Very good. <laughs> We're gonna do it. Very yes, good. For sure. Okay, my friend, thank you very much. Very Bienvenido good. a Mexico. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what a beer. Ha, ha, ha.